Hello and welcome to a new series here on Football Manager 21, it's International Journeyman. Our aim here is simple, can we win all six of the major continental tournaments around the world plus the World Cup? Of course we'll take anything else we can get along the way like the Nations League, the Olympics, any youth tournaments we steal from an under 20s manager or anything like that, but that's the overall aim. Now international management is the poor relation in game, there's no training or dynamics and the save will mostly just be me pressing the spacebar until I go insane, but let's see what happens. I can't think of any place better to start our adventure than the land of sheep and hobbits. It's it's New Zealand. I mean, we literally have to start with them or else no oceanic teams will likely even be playable in the game, and I haven't really got a spare 40 years to grind up Vanuatu or the Solomon Islands, have I? New Zealand are only ranked 122 in the FIFA rankings, but we actually are feasibly able to win something and can field a team featuring players you've actually heard of, and by that I mean Chris Wood. Now I am doing a disservice because it's not just Chris Wood. Winston Reid is still knocking about as well, presumably held together by some sort of tape or glue. Then there's Ryan Thomas, he plays for PSV, and there's also Tommy Smith, who now plays in League One with Colchester, so he'll probably welcome a break from that experience. And some of the youngsters are genuinely promising. Sir Pete Singh plays for Bayern Munich, and Liberetto Kikisse... I have no idea how to say that, but he looks really good and recently moved to the Belgian First Division. Now as nice as New Zealand is, with any luck, we should be here for quite a short time, as we can win the first of the seven trophies we need here today. The OFC Nations Cup was supposed to be held in 2020, but was cancelled because of the virus thing, but it is actually still in the game if you backdoor through a country like Sweden who have an early start date. And that's good, because it means we won't actually have to wait four years to win it, and we're even hosting it this time. Now I'm saying all that because while New Zealand are ranked low globally, regionally, since Australia left anyway, they are the dominant force here and the only team of full professionals, but stranger things have happened. In our group we have New Caledonia, the Solomon Islands and the only team other than New Zealand to win the OFC Nations Cup since Australia left, Tahiti. A flick through their squad shows we should be considered the overwhelming favourites, but what is it about this game that only fills me with dread in situations like that? Our first press conference is a great success as one person shows up. We probably shouldn't have put out so many chairs, guys. We will be using the trusty 4-3-3. Stefan Marinovic is going to be in goal with the youthful Liberetto and Kerwin at wing back, plus the experience of Smith and Reed in the centre of defence. Bill Twilimo is going to anchor the midfield with Joe Bell and Ryan Thomas ahead of him, and Marco Rojas starts on the left, while Serpeet Singh will hopefully add some spark on the right-hand side. And then, of course, there's the main man Chris Wood up top, showcasing everything Sean Dyche has taught him. We kick things off against New Caledonia, safe in the knowledge that I've only successfully managed to motivate my goalkeeper, and clearly there's no language issues here either. But it doesn't take long to fire things up on the pitch, as some wonderful skill from Sir Pete Singh sets up Joe Bell for the first goal of the save. Ten minutes later we double our lead through Ryan Thomas, Singh once again running the show, and that was that. An uneventful second half, good to see you conserving energy lads, very sensible, especially as, and I'll probably be mentioning this every single episode, you still, for some reason, can't rest players between international matches. Miles, please can we sort this out for FM22? The Solomon Islands are up next and they actually beat Tahiti in their opening game so I have a slight hesitation, but luckily they're no match for Chris Wood who opens his account for the tournament on the half hour mark. A fabulous strike from Liberetto makes it two and then Elijah just adds a third. Serpeet Singh then gets injured and even though it's only for three weeks he's ruled out for the rest of the tournament, which is fantastic. Luckily though we can call up Jai Ingham as a replacement which is an appreciated feature and as as Tahiti lose their second match, that means we can fully rotate for the final game with qualification already assured. And then goals from Michael Boxall and Alex Rufer in short top spot is sealed with maximum points. We get drawn against Fiji for the semi-final and I bring in Elijah Just for the injured Serpent Singh, but otherwise the preferred first 11 is restored. There's an early warning sign for us as Roy Krishna races through before firing wide. Tommy Smith then has a chance which he heads over and we go into the break at a stalemate. Which considering that we're New Zealand is really bad, it's been a really poor performance from everybody but especially from Chris Wood. But eventually, 74 minutes in, a good run from Liberetto is rewarded as he finds Rojas who feeds Ryan Thomas for a nice finish. Fiji then nearly equalise with Zahid heading just over, but not long after Liberetto again makes a run and this time it's Marco Rojas on hand to make it two and seal our place in the final. But that is the absolute bare minimum and we certainly made it hard for ourselves out there, not a great performance at all. Clearly complacency getting to us a bit there and apparently Graham Potter made the trip to New Zealand to watch that one. I'm sure it was well worth his time seeing Chris Wood put in one of the worst performances of his entire career. 
The final will be against Papua New Guinea, which concerns me because while we have an actual Premier League standard striker who has managed just one goal all tournament, they have David Brown who plays in Finland but he's already scored 11. 11. And oh thank god it looks like he got injured in the semi-final, that's a bullet dodged. Now there's not many series where we are already in a final in episode 1 so this is pretty big. The thing obviously about international football is that most tournaments are only every four years so you need to take your chances and we won't be having many better than this in the entire series. After that poor performance in the semi-final I'm looking for a quick start here and we get one as eight minutes in a good early move sees Elijah just away confidently to open the scores and settle the old nerves. Until 20 minutes later when Tommy Smith decides to muck around with the ball at the back and allow Tommy Semi to waltz past him to equalise. Simply amazing. That's it until the break, and then in the second half, Winston Reid heads over, Joe Bell then fires wide from a decent position, and then another long ball sees Tommy Semi away once again, but this time, thankfully, Marinovic makes a save. We still can't find a breakthrough. This is ridiculous. We should be absolutely annihilating them. And just when extra time looks inevitable, Nico Kerwin sends Elijah just through once again, only for him to be taken out by McDonald, allowing Chris Wood to step up score the penalty and win us the tournament. We really got away with one there, but that's the joy of international football. Chris Wood was awful all tournament, but all anyone will ever remember is that. We've done it, we've won a tournament that didn't actually happen, it's incredible stuff. And there we go, episode one is done and we've ticked off one of the major trophies that we needed already. It literally can only go downhill from here.